Hello, everyone, and thank you for attending today's webinar, Inside the Growth of Airport Parking Guidance. My name is Alexandra, and I will be your moderator for today's event. Before we begin, we wanted to cover a few housekeeping items. At the bottom of your audience console are multiple application widgets you can use. If you have any questions during the webcast, you can click on the Q&A widget at the bottom and submit your question. We will try to answer these during the webcast, but if a fuller answer is needed or if we run out of time, it will be answered later via email. We do capture all questions. A copy of today's slide deck and a white paper are available in the resource list widget that looks like a green folder at the bottom of your screen. You can expand your slide area by clicking on the maximize icon on the top right of the slide area or by dragging the bottom right corner of it. If you have any technical difficulty, please click on the help widget. It has a question mark icon and covers common technical issues. An on-demand version of the webcast will be available approximately one day after the webcast and can be accessed using the same audience link that was sent to you earlier. We will also be distributing a webinar recording and a copy of your free white paper through the email address you provided during the registration. At this time, your audio is streaming correctly. Please note that the audio portion will stream through your PC or laptop speaker. Be sure to check your speaker volume, um, the volume settings on your Windows or Mac, or your headset to ensure that it is turned on and the volume set is at an audible level. In Windows, you will normally see a little speaker volume icon in the bottom right corner of your screen. Today's webcast is presented using a slide deck and not a screen share or a live demo. If you're not seeing the slide movement in your console, you can try hitting the refresh icon in your browser URL bar, or you can hit F5 to refresh. If you're still experiencing issues, hit Control-Shift-Delete to clear your browser's cache. Thank you for your attention. And now I would like to mention a few words about Park Assist and a few words about Airport Improvement Magazine that are responsible for bringing this educational event to you today. Park Assist is the parking industry's leading camera-based parking guidance company with the most installations in the world. This patented, award-winning technology helps customers effortlessly find parking spaces in real time as well as find their cars when they return. Simultaneously, Park Assist's proprietary platform provides parking operators with tools to improve customer satisfaction, create new revenue opportunities, realize greater operational control, capture Parker analytics, and expand CCTV capabilities. Park Assist is part of the TKH Group, a 1.6 billion publicly traded company headquartered in Netherlands. Airport Improvement is a publication that is distributed to the entire industry in North America, including airport management teams, consultants, government officials, and industry suppliers. All editorial is devoted to airport improvements, processes, and of course, the people who make it happen. Each issue features recently completed project work at airports best-of-class case studies, detailed project specifics, chronicle special challenges overcome, uncover valuable lessons learned, and highlight potential applications to future projects with input from airport managers and their consultants and suppliers. Today, we are excited to have Paul Bauer, a managing editor and a publisher of Airport Improvements with us. He will start our webcast presentation by take, talking about trends, state of the airport industry, and the latest industry innovations in airport operations. Paul, you have the floor. Thank you. Good morning. And thank you, Alex, 
and Park Assist for inviting me to this webinar. Over the years, there have been times when airlines have done really well in terms of profitability and passengers carried. Yet there are other times when airports have done really well, but rarely are both doing record business at the same time. Not just with passenger numbers, but with revenues, investment in product, etc. Not since the 1970s, or perhaps the height of the tech bubble in 2001, have both airports and airlines been as robust together as we see them today. There are a number of factors to credit. Cheap fuel, ultra-low cost carriers, which are bringing new passengers to aviation, not simply stealing from others, as well as giving smaller and more remote airports business they never thought possible. Other factors for today's renaissance include a good steady economy and business and banking stability. What I mean by stability is that airports and airlines can plan ahead knowing that things are somewhat predictable in terms of growth and demand. As long as all of these factors continue to be in play, immediate short-term growth will help fuel our industry and raise the tide for all to enjoy. The market is red hot indeed. 2016 year-end numbers were proof of that. The U.S. had a record 823 million passengers, up 3.1% from the 798 million served in 2015. Yesterday, Airports Council International reported their global summary year-over-year -year growth for 2016 compared to 2015. They reported that total passengers were up 5.6%, total international passengers plus 6.6%, and total aircraft movements coming in ahead at plus 2.3%. It all starts with passengers wanting to travel and being able to buy tickets. The 25 U.S. passenger airlines logged a record $25.6 billion in profits in 2015, more than three times the industry's after-tax earnings of $7.5 billion reported in 2014, according to data from the Transportation Department. 2016 after-tax profits are expected to come in at plus $20 billion. Profit is not a swear word, and airlines need to be profitable. Ancillary fees have saved their bacon, and you see what it did for airline growth. And this did nothing to tamper down the public's appetite to purchase tickets. These airline profits mean they have money to invest in fleets as well as airport projects and have shown a propensity to do so in a number of their large hub airport cities. Not even the uncertainty of a new president and administration has interrupted our momentum as we move into 2017. The aviation industry is hot just like the stock market. January's numbers reveal that the aviation market is strong and continuing its record growth. Reports from individual airports are coming in, and say for the month of February, Denver reported that they saw more than 4.2 million passengers in February, marking the 18th consecutive month of year-over-year -year passenger traffic increases in the Mile High City. The February total of 4.2 million passengers was about 3% higher than the 4,069,000 passengers in February of 2016, which is made even more impressive by the fact that February of 16 included an extra day for leap year. Kansas City International reported 35 consecutive months of passenger growth. The Aviation Department reports a million passengers arrived and departed through Kansas City International's gates in March, an 11% increase from March of 16. Passenger boardings were up 10.7% for a total of half a million. March was their busiest month since March of 2001. For the year to date, total passengers in and out of Kansas City were 2.5 million, up 6.2%. So what about parking? How important is parking to airport revenues? Well, parking is the number two revenue source for airports coming in behind travel arrival fees. Parking has always been a key contributor to airport revenues. Steady, significant, and indispensable. Also, parking is a great counterbalance to the higher volatility to landing fees and other aeronautical revenues. U.S. airports parking and ground transportation 
tallied $3.7 billion and was the number one source of non-aeronautical revenue for airports. Airline contracts, ultra-low-cost carriers, and volume are a lot more volatile than parking rates. So with airports and airlines enjoying such high levels of success, why worry? Isn't now the time to shake each other's hand, give one another a pat on the back or a fist bump? We're doing good, right? Yes, we are. We should celebrate our current levels of success. It's been a long time coming, and we deserve it. However, no, we can't afford to stand still. Excuse me. Yes. Um, while passenger and revenue numbers keep rising, so does the demand for increased capacity and the push for a higher level of customer experience. We know better. We know that our industry can be somewhat cautious and know that past success is no guarantee of future fortune. We know that things can change faster than spring weather. We've seen airlines experience feast, famine, feast, famine. It's cyclical. We also know that construction of new facilities takes a lot of time and money. Many do not appreciate the long lead times needed for planning and permitting of airport projects. We can't wait until we've reached capacity before we start planning for an expansion project. Take parking. Here are the top areas of airport spending according to FAA's CATS Report 127 for 2015. Looking at this chart, you'll see that parking has not enjoyed nearly the amount of investment that terminals and airfield have seen. Now, I'm not saying that parking investment should be $3.5 billion, but it should be higher than the $0.59 billion that you see here. There may be many reasons for that, but things are changing. It's not all bricks and mortar. Spending on IT is more positive. And growth opportunities for airports need not always be tied to brick and mortar. IT is one of the categories that lead in airport spending increases. According to CETA's 2016 Airport IT Trend Survey, over the last three years, airport CIOs have seen their budgets grow at a compound annual growth rate of 8.41% compared to a revenue growth of 6.36 over the same period. Further, CIOs are far forecasting higher budgets for this year, with 58% expecting an increase over 2016 and 29% expecting their budget to stay the same. The top three investment priorities, passenger processing, passenger and airport security, and operations. Excuse me. I seem to have lost a slide. Okay, so what, what do we need? It's nice to look in the rearview mirror and see where we've come from and what we've done. But a larger question is, where are we going or what are we gonna to do tomorrow? As we've discussed, you just don't snap your fingers and new buildings, systems, and equipment magically appear. You determine what is needed. ACI North America asked airports to help quantify what's needed in the associated costs. Granted, the motivation for the study was to help make sure that funding is secured. The president has stated that he wants to invest $1 trillion in transportation infrastructure costs and, avi um, and aviation needs to identify and quantify um, what is needed and where. Having the blueprint of projects and numbers is a great start. Coming up with the money to pay for them is another story. Without getting too far off track, we know that passenger facility fees are a ready source of monies. Now we just need Congress to lift the cap and authorize it. Okay. Many Americans feel enhancements are needed to improve the quality of airport experience. Parking is in this mix. According to information gathered by HNTD, 33% of travelers feel that parking needs to be improved at airports. So in general, what do airport passengers want as it relates to parking? More than nine in 10 of Americans believe airport terminals could be better connected to ground transportation and transit networks, which would also include parking. 
The same study mentions that there should be less walking and fewer shuttles. Parking and transportation near the terminals is the third highest frustrating aspect of air travel. The big three, customer experience, off-site competition, and operational efficiency. It used to be that compared to other areas of an airport, coming up with parking stories for airport improvement was a huge challenge. Why? Well, not because it didn't exist, but in the airport industry, parking was, well, boring. There wasn't much new going on. Coming up with stories that were interesting or not repetitive was a real challenge. I risk losing readership and interest if we can't find things that people want to take time to read about. What we're searching for are things that are new, fresh, and informative. Fortunately for me in the industry and finally the customers, parking has changed big time. The big three are reasons why we now have more to talk about in the industry and for me as a publisher of an airport magazine. So what's the change? Customer experience. It's moved from within the terminals out to parking in other areas of the airport. Amenities such as valet parking, oil changes, car washes, vehicle locator assistance have all become more common with airport parking. In the picture here, you see Spokane International's car wash. Spokane invested nearly $1.5 million to build an automatic car wash and extend associated infrastructure to the area. The new touchless car wash allows travelers parking in one of the airport's two garages or its main outdoor lot to clean their vehicles at no extra cost. Some of the other amenities I've mentioned are not only meant to provide a higher level of customer experience, but provide ancillary revenue as well. Off-site airport or parking competition. It's there. It's always been. Seems like there are two or three off-site competitors for every on-airport parking operation. These days, airports are now treating parking as the important revenue generator it is and focusing on improving the overall customer experience. As such, you'll see airports introduce marketing campaigns to help capture a larger percentage of the overall marketing pie. Off-airport parking operators exist in part either due to on-airport capacity limitations or because off-airport operators are giving customers more amenities at lower rates. In many cases, this is needless, and airports are leaving dollars on the table. Many off-airport parking operators would never have been able to gain a foothold if airports had kept up with innovations in customer service. But the reality is that they're here. They're established and innovative. Once entrenched, it's much more difficult to compete against them. But it can be done. What it takes is not taking parking operations and customers for granted, and perhaps taking a cue from some of the innovations that off-airport operators are coming up with and then beating them at their own game. Operational efficiency. There was a presentation given by a parking supplier at the Airport Consultant Council's annual meeting in Long Beach back in November of 2015. It really got people's attention, including mine. The presenter boldly told the audience that by changing the operational efficiency and adding variable pricing, that airports could double their parking revenues in a few years and do it without adding any new stalls. With online reservations, with the side benefit of acquiring customer demographics like email addresses, toll tag type of payment, variable pricing, automated guidance to available spaces, smartphone apps, and other advances, the operating efficiencies of airport parking has a lot of growth in its future and is better able to compete with off-airport parking operators. Lastly, there is the greening of parking. To some, greening is a way to brand an airport as being environmentally friendly. To others, it's all business. Regardless, we've seen a number of parking structures include green to parking. Pictured here is Burlington, Vermont. In addition to solar panels to generate electricity, the 13,000 square foot rooftop garden helps minimize stormwater runoff from the roof and also provides airport visitors with a scenic place to enjoy some of the best vistas in New England. 
Burlington's rooftop oasis has proved to be so popular that groups rent it for special events, providing the airport with a new source of non-aeronautical revenue. The airport director reports that they have weddings there and also various fundraisers. The garden can easily accommodate up to 150 people. Pictured here is Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport. They turned on a $25.4 million solar array built on top of two parking garages at its Lindbergh terminal. The 8,700 solar panels produce three megawatts of electricity per day. The airport's peak daily power consumption is 20 megawatts, so the solar panels produce 15% of the peak load. The power is consumed in real time and not sold to the local power company. Airport parking has come a long way, but we've only scratched the surface. It still has plenty of opportunities. Thank you. Well, thank Alex? you, Paul, for your informative presentation. We would like to ask our audience now to take a poll. I will read the question out loud and yet let you take a minute to answer. The results of the poll will be projected live. As you see in front of you, there is multiple choice. Please choose the applicable option and click Submit. I'll give you a few seconds to answer. The question is, at your current organization, what kind of parking guidance technology do you have? Thank you all for taking the poll. And now I would like to introduce Daryl Brentley, an airport industry veteran, for his portion of the presentation. Daryl, please begin your presentation now. Thank you, Alex. And those are interesting results to the poll question, which we can uh, visit later. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for attending this webinar. Um, Alex, as Alex mentioned, I've worked my previous 25 years with the airport authority in Orlando. And I do miss the airport environment, but it's so rewarding for me in my role with Park Assist to be able to continue to visit with airports throughout North America and discuss all the airport issues that are going on, including airport parking. I would like to begin today by taking a high-level look at the evolution of parking guidance systems the trending of parking guidance at airports, some common pain points in airport parking that come up in the discussions of when I'm visiting with airports, and how you, you can expand your platform in airport parking with technology that is available to you today. Okay, the evolution of parking guidance, the first count the first count system that was installed at airports was basically magnetic loop count. And when a vehicle crossed these magnetic loops, it would reduce the space by one for that parking area. When a vehicle exited over the magnetic loop, it was to increase the space in the parking area. Well, it was really a low cost solution. Uh, however, you know, they found out quickly that there was not real good accuracy with this system. And ultimately, this system was really a binary solution that only did one thing, it counted cars. But it required manual reset for staff when the counts are off in order to try to provide accurate information to the parking customers. You know, there was one airport that I met with recently, and the parking staff there was telling me that their airport director was so frustrated with receiving customer complaints that their parking signage was way off that he directed them to go have staff go out there and count every car on each level every hour, every day, and update those space counts so that they can provide more accurate information um, to the parking customers. And that's a labor-intensive initiative, so I'm sure they're looking forward to being able to obtain some technology that will alleviate them of that burden. Now, ultrasonic single space systems uh, came around about 10 years ago, 
and they did a much better job in providing accurate information to parking customers and the parking operator to know what was available and what wasn't. The problem is it requires a lot of infrastructure to install the ultrasonic sensors in each and every space in a parking garage. And ultimately, they do the same thing as far as binary operations. They count vehicles. For camera-based sensors, Park Assist invented the first single space camera system in 2010. And it really elevated parking to a whole new level of intelligence. By allowing the operator to actually capture business intelligence and even implement tiered payment technology, which Paul mentioned briefly. And looking at the trends in airport parking guidance, um, 20 years ago I mentioned that some airports implemented the loop-based loop systems, then about 10 years ago there was the adoption of single-space ultrasonic sensors, then about five years ago, um, and it was after the first camera-based sensors uh, were invented and deployed, there started to be some cost savings. Um, at the same time, they were increasing the intelligence of single-space parking guidance systems. Today, the majority of Asian Pacific, Europe, and North American airports have chosen to implement parking guidance systems. And it, it really helps their customers so much in wayfinding. And there's significant movement to deploy guidance systems and improve the customer experience and capture the business intelligence. And that goes not only from the large airports that maybe have more funding than others, but also to the medium-sized airports and even small airports that perhaps never had a garage before. They had a surface parking lot, but because of the increased flight activity and passengers that Paul has mentioned, now they're building a garage. And they want to be able to roll out this garage with the latest and greatest technology. OK, I talked about my discussions with uh, the airport staff and a lot of different airports. And there were some common pain points that always come up in my conversations. Wayfinding issues. It seems like problem number one are airports that have customer complaints from their customers that arrive, they go into the garage, the space signage says there's available space on a level, and they drive through that level, and they drive up and down every row, and there's no parking. So it's immediate frustration factor for the customer. The lack of uh, space is even worse when, and there are some airports that I've talked to that reach capacity, maybe one day, two days a week, sometimes it's as much as four days a week during certain hours of the day, the garage becomes completely full. And in that case, the customer enters parking, they have to pull a ticket, and they're encountered with a sign that says, garage is at capacity, proceed to remote lot, and you take the shuttle bus back to the terminal. Now they've added time to that trip. They're still thinking about having to clear the security checkpoint and get to their gate. And it really causes a stressful situation for the passenger. And sometimes that's the push that takes these customers and, and makes them find an off-airport solution that, that's better for them. Now, for lack of technology, that's one where the airport directors and managers that are managing parking, they understand the technology. They know how it can help them because they currently have little control of the parking. They don't have that technology. They're unable to optimize space. They have to have offsets on their garage level count systems because they're concerned about it showing space and passengers not being able to find a space. They want to be able to improve the customer experience and enhance their security and also increase revenue. The problem is, is that they are unable to get funding for the project. It's not always the easiest. Uh, to, to make that happen. And I, I know how that goes working at the airport. There's a budget cycle every year. You're submitting your capital expenditure request. And then a committee meets and they rank your project. And not all the projects get funded. So they get stuck in that scenario. Now, for revenue concerns, what I hear at airports are not just off airport competition you know, affecting their parking. There's concern there, obviously. But also the TNCs, the transportation network companies. You know, some airports have told me that they've had a, a noticed lack of revenue, that the TNCs have taken away their parking customer because instead of people driving to the airport and parking, they're jumping in a, 
an Uber or a Lyft and getting a ride to the airport and the same thing on the return. So without the technology, they're really unable to compete um, effectively like they would like to. Okay, let's look at an airport case study. This is for Fort Lauderdale Airport. <clears throat> Several years ago, their leadership staff um, had, a, had a pretty good handle on knowing that their parking revenue was in a steady decline. The parking facilities were lacking in maintenance and atmosphere. The customer complaints that they were receiving about parking were mostly negative, and the offer for parking operators were gaining market share. So the Broward County Aviation Department conducted an assessment of parking, and their findings were interesting. They said, yes, indeed, Fort Lauderdale is losing parking customers to off airport competition, not because of price, but because of convenience. And the Fort La Lauderdale customer experience was certainly not up to the, uh, the standards for parking that they would expect, and they recommended a complete overhaul of the parking program to include improving the facilities, providing a parks upgrade, implementing an online reservation system, frequent parker program, a new valet parking operation, and a new park assist camera-based guidance system that would truly improve the customer experience with wayfinding, roadway signage to find your car, the automatic license plate inventory, um, and the park select rate to help them increase their revenue. So they set out on this mission to completely rebrand the Fort Lauderdale parking and to identify the project initiatives and have a specific return on investment. I think the one thing that Fort Lauderdale did so, so well um, that other airports can do also is they implemented a very strategic marketing campaign to advertise the Park Assist camera-based guidance system and the features that would improve the customer experience there. It was very well received, and they not only advertised in the local Fort Lauderdale area, they advertised throughout South Florida on radio and television. It was very effective. Well, following their initiatives, Fort Lauderdale achieved record parking revenue, which increased 22% over the previous year. And now, currently, Fort Lauderdale is in the process of relocating their employee parking to create an additional 3,000 spaces for customer parking, so more revenue increase coming for them. Okay, elevating parking with technology. Um, the single space um, guidance systems absolutely optimize your current garage space. You're able to gain approximately three to five percent in efficiency of garage space. And at the same time, because you're, you're gaining that efficiency, if you're deploying that technology for new garages, you're actually able to minimize the number of spaces in your design build plans for your new garage construction thereby saving a lot of money. Business analytics to knowing the customer and the trends are so important today. So many airports have rolled out the low energy Bluetooth beacon technology to be able to um, you know, connect with the customer and know who their customer is. The same thing with parking. It's so important that the camera-based guidance technology can actually know who that customer is with the license plate recognition and know their trends and, and their visits. And I mentioned a little earlier about the return on investment with the tiered parking rate. Yeah, that's definitely um, a valuable feature. So I'll just uh, go high-level discussion on these. Um, but ultimately, to be able for the garage operator to have a dashboard that gives them a real-time look, real look at their parking operation is so, so important. Um, technology, it takes the control of parking and puts it right into the hands of the operator. And I wish so much that I had this when I was overseeing parking uh, in Orlando. It gives you an operator, uh, operational control of the facility, real-time heat maps. Uh, you can click on each space and get a view of the vehicles that are in that space. It allows you to use technology to control the parking areas for user groups, such as policy enforcement or maybe integration with your reservation systems or frequent parker programs, or even the law enforcement agencies that are starting to take a renewed interest 
and knowing if threat vehicles are showing up at airports. That technology is all available with camera-based guidance. And I mentioned security. Uh, they can do streaming security surveillance with camera-based guidance. So it gives uh, relief, peace of mind to the customer and also mitigates risk for the airport to have streaming security surveillance. This is the most valuable feature, I believe, in camera-based guidance um, because it boils down to when you're trying to gain authorization for your capital project, being able to provide a specific return on investment with a module where you can take a certain number of space and, and make it premium pricing, um, your integration with your reservation and loyalty parking programs, and it's all possible through integration with your local parks uh, providers and that exists today. So in conclusion, uh, technology is just continuing to evolve business processes of airports today. Um, I go back to the old days in airports and customers would pull to a gate and pull an entry ticket and proceed to park and they would come back to their car and they would pull to the exit to a cashier. Uh, those days are, are pretty much over. You know, today customers want real-time and accurate parking availability before they arrive, and they want to be in, in control of their parking experience. So that's my presentation this morning. I thank you for listening. I'm going to hand it back to Alex so Molly Goldberg can provide a more in-depth look at camera-based camera guidance features. Thank you. Well, thank you, Daryl, so much for the great insights. Um, I want to take a second uh, and do another poll with you guys. Um, I'm going to uh, read a question again um, so that you can take some time to answer it, um, and then we will move forward with our presentation. Um, so at this point, um, the question is, what do you think is the most important area for improvement at your organization? Um, again, please use the multiple um, choice answers and then click Submit when you're ready. All right, just a few more seconds, and then we will project the results live. All right, very good. So it's pretty even. Okay, so for the last portion of the event, um, it will be presented by Molly Goldberg, who is a parking guidance technology expert. Molly, you have the floor. Thank you so much, Alex, um, and thank you everyone again for joining. Paul and Daryl did a really wonderful job of articulating uh, so many of the challenges and changes that the airport uh, industry is facing today. Um, and for my portion of the presentation, I really want to take a deeper dive in the, into the technology being used to address so many of those changes and challenges. Um, as Daryl mentioned, back in 2010, Park Assist invented camera-based parking guidance. Um, and the goal for that was really to go beyond um, just red and green lights, driving visitors to individual spaces. That was a, a small piece of the puzzle. There were still other challenges we were seeking to address. Um, and ultimately, the goal was, you know, to increase revenue, enhance security, improve operations, and ultimately create that one-of-a-kind visitor experience at your airport. Um, and this camera-based parking guidance uh, system is, is really doing two primary things. So first and foremost, that detection piece, right? Is a car in the space, yes or no? Um, but aside from that, the, the sensor is able to do license plate recognition on a single space basis. Um, and we'll discuss in, in just a moment what that allows for in terms of software. So, you know, if, if you're providing this wonderful customer experience, the last thing you want to do is interrupt your operations or lose any revenue in the process of installing a system like this. And one really unique aspect of camera-based parking guidance is that it's installed down the center of the drive lane as opposed to over each and every space. Um, so, you know, this is, this is really beneficial in a number of ways. Of course, it's reducing visual clutter, providing a much more elegant, streamlined approach. Um, but aside from that, 
again, no interruption uh, to your daily operation and no interruption to revenue during the install process. So, you know, 10 years ago, um, if you were doing a rehabilitation of a parking garage or building a new parking garage, you were having to opt into so many different types of hardware, right? So maybe you had to purchase a lighting system and a surveillance system and a parking guidance system. Um, and our goal was to, to create a all-in-one solution. So you're buying one piece of hardware, working with one provider uh, to give you all of that. So we introduced something that we call the L4, which is a combined parking guidance and lighting system, where you're getting all of the benefits of camera-based parking guidance sitting over um, really a full-blown lighting system. Um, so again, we'll, we'll jump into some of those benefits in just a moment, but it's, it's that full solution, um, ideally solving all of those challenges. So aside from a uh, parking guidance system, aside from those red and green lights, we really believe wayfinding, um, as, as Daryl touched on, is just as much a, a part of the puzzle as anything else. And, and at Park Assist, we really believe in taking a consultative approach to that. You know, we want visitors to know what, what is your long-term versus short-term parking availability look like before they even get off the highway to enter, to enter the, the airport. When they arrive at the individual facility, we want them to know on a level-by-level -level basis how many spaces are available, down to the individual decision point. When you get to the end of a drive aisle, you want to tell a visitor, if there's only three spaces available to the right, but 20 available to the left, Maybe you want to encourage them to take that left um, versus going to the parking space that they're just naturally going to try to go to. Um, maybe you have some existing wayfinding signage that you want to integrate um, an occupancy count into. It, you know, we feel that it is so important to understand the operation, to understand how your visitor's behavior um, works so that you can put in wayfinding signage to, of course, prevent um, choke points and congestion. Um, and as I'm, I'm sure most of you could imagine, there's some real benefits to this reduction in drive time um, with wayfinding, with camera-based parking guidance, outside of just uh, visitor convenience and operational control. Um, we've conducted studies, uh, namely one at a 2,000 space facility, that found after installing a camera-based parking guidance system, drive time was reduced by 44%. Um, and that was pretty impactful in regards to sustainability initiatives. Um, that actually amounted to 1 million miles driven saved per year, or 450,000 kilograms of CO2 emissions reduced. Um, so it's something we're very passionate about as a company. Um, and one wonderful piece of our system is that we can actually quantify uh, that information for you. So aside from, you know, of course, using camera-based guidance uh, to reduce drive time and ensure visitors can quickly and efficiently find a parking space, these sensors are also collecting a ton of data, which is really resulting in an actionable data mining platform. Um, and Daryl touched on this again, but from the operator's perspective, having parking availability at your fingertips in real time, having APIs, having the ability to integrate with existing platforms truly just helps create a, a much more efficient operation. Um, and, and we have a, a browser-based platform to do just that. Um, and, you know, it, it is giving you that real-time information of what's going on in your garage at the moment, but it's also collecting information um, and predictive analytics for you to use down the road. So maybe you want to compare, um, you know, how Wednesdays have been in terms of occupancy or turnover or dwell time week after week or month after month. Um, you know, perhaps you want to understand uh, how your visitors are, are trending. Are, are more visitors coming weekly um, in January versus February or more coming monthly? Um, and perhaps, you know, you can, you can entice loyalty with the Frequent Parker program using that data mining, using that platform. Um, and really, you know, the goals around camera-based parking guidance are, are quite simple. We're trying to, you know, make the experience better for your visitors, reduce enforcement and the costs associated with that, help you enhance security, and ultimately boost revenue. 
Um, and, and how we do that is, is through a number of APIs. Uh, I always use the analogy that having a camera-based guidance system is, is almost like having a smartphone in that it's very scalable. You can opt into apps as they become of interest to your operation. Um, and we have a number of apps that specific, or, or software modules, rather, that relate directly back to the airports um, that I'll touch on today. So the first one we're going to discuss is our find your car feature, the car locator. Um, and this can be done in a number of ways. Fort Lauderdale Airport opted to put a number of these find your car kiosks throughout the airport so that after what might be a long time away, visitors can simply walk up to a kiosk, type in three digits of their, of their license plate, and, and see a map of exactly where their car is parked versus where they're standing. Um, this same logic can be applied to a pay-on-foot machine if the screen is large enough. You can use your existing pay-on-foot machine to offer find your car using the ticket that you pull instead of your license plate as the indicator. You can also do the same type of function through a mobile application. Mobile applications are also used to offer occupancy information. Um, a number of our clients using camera-based parking guidance, such as for Lauderdale Airport, but also Omaha Airport, have uh, mobile applications that aside from just giving you the find your car capabilities and parking occupancy information, they're also giving you other key uh, info about the surrounding area, whether it be shuttle service or local weather, benefits like that. Um, Daryl had also mentioned reservations. One thing I know Fort Lauderdale is looking to do is use their existing mobile app to, to allow visitors to book a reservation for a space ahead of time. Um, you can integrate with, with companies such as Chantry, such as ADPM, the list goes on, to have a, an all-in-one mobile application to both reserve a parking space, find your vehicle when you return, and know how much parking is available before you even arrive. And the, the alerts feature also gives you this ultimate control over your facility to define and enforce policies. Um, so, so common ones around, uh, around this are, of course, employee enforcement. Perhaps your em employees are taking the best parking spaces and you want to ensure those spaces are available for, uh, for your visitors. Um, alternatively, maybe you want to be notified if a, uh, a threat vehicle is parking on site or, uh, you know, an employee that's no longer supposed to be parking on site. Uh, you can get an automatic alert letting you know when this type of behavior takes place. Um, many of our clients use this feature as well. They want to know when a, when a um, vehicle has been parked for 30 days or 60 days and cross-check it with a, a roster of stolen vehicles or what have you. There, there's many different ways to have ultimate control over your facility by using this alerts feature. And the last feature I'm going to touch on is this tiered pricing um, that, that we've all kind of, uh, you know, been, been talking about throughout today's presentation. And why it's so wonderful, and I'm really going to walk you through how it works, right? So a visitor would enter the facility, and regardless of your revenue control equipment, they would pull a ticket. When they pull that ticket, we're then matching the ticket pulled to a license plate reader on entry. Because the camera-based parking guidance system is offering single space license plate recognition, you can turn X amount of spaces in your facility into premium spaces. Call it the best 10%, the best spaces near the terminal. So that ticket and that plate being read on entry is now being matched to a subgroup of premium spaces. So when that parker goes to pay, an automatic surcharge would be added to their ticket. Um, so it's a really wonderful way to open up a brand new revenue stream on a very flexible basis without putting in any gates. And we can do that, of course, because the LED ring at the bottom of the camera-based parking guidance sensor can turn thousands of colors. So between that and dynamic signage indicating that it's a premium area, you're able to flex that zone. So you're never going to lose capacity by implementing a tiered pricing model. Um, and in terms of the technology, that's all I'll touch on today. I'm very appreciative uh, to both Paul and Daryl and Alex for facilitating such a wonderful presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Molly. Um, that was a very interesting presentation as well. 
Um, at this time, um, our presentations have concluded. Um, I would like to give our viewers some time to start the Q&A portion of the presentation. Uh, we already have a lot of questions, but um, I want to make sure that we have enough time for at least maybe take three to five. Um, please go ahead and ask the question if you haven't done so. Um, and I'll give you a couple seconds and then we'll start. Okay, um, so I think we have a few um, questions that have come in. I'm going to try to address the global audience as well. Um, this, is, um, this is a great group today with us. We almost have um, 200 people um, on the line, and I want to make sure we get to a few different regions. Um, so actually, uh, the first question is for Molly, um, and uh, the question is from Eyal. Uh, Molly, uh, what is the solution for the last level of the parking garage while it still remains open and if it doesn't have a roof cover? Molly, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Absolutely. Great question. So in a rooftop environment, there are a number of different types of technology solutions. Um, what we commonly find is, is, is the best and most cost-effective solution for the rooftop is a combination of a loop system along with license plate recognition cameras. So while you're not getting the red and green lights, um, you're still getting an understanding of which plates are parked on the rooftop area. Um, and of course, signage is a key part of that. Uh, aside from that, there are wireless pucks that can be placed on an individual space-by-space -space basis, um, as well as a technology called an ultrasonic pass-through, if you can install loops, where it can sense a, a car running underneath the ultrasonic wave that a car has entered the rooftop region. Okay, fantastic, Molly. Thank you so much. Uh, if you don't mind, just taking one more question your way. Um, and the question is um, coming in from Heathrow Airport. Um, so. Uh, the question is, uh, reserved parking spaces. So while um, the pre-booked spaces, right, they are, the yield is managed, how is Park Assist uh, able to control or inform reserved spaces, and how is the solution of reserved spaces, reserved parking spaces, demonstrated as a successful, right, and specifically during high demand seasons? Great question. So how, to answer the first part of that question and, and how it's done, again, we would integrate with a reservations platform. And what's unique about the Park Assist platform, of course, is that we can actually understand which license plates are associated with which reserved spaces. So if a, if a parker with license plate ABC123 um, is meant to park in a space, but license plate, you know, 456 tries to park in one of those reserved spaces, we can send an automatic alert letting operations know a, a parker that does not have a reserve, ha, have a reservation, is parked in a space meant for, for a reserved parker. Um, the logic is pretty similar to how we would use this tiered parking model. Um, different spaces are associated with different license plates. That's the real key takeaway. Um, and again, you know, what, what's so wonderful about this and, and the real success in a model like this is that you're not using any hard gates or hard nets to protect these reserved spaces. You can flex this zone because you can report on this zone. So you'll know if you're utilizing the 10% of spaces you've chosen to make reserved or if you're not. So perhaps you increase those spaces, perhaps you reduce it as it applies to your operation. Great, great, Molly. Thank you so much. Um, the next question is also an international question, and this question goes to Paul. Um, Paul, can you elaborate a little more on operational efficiency? And I guess to specify this question, um, what uh, Sherry Ann is asking here is, uh, what's the biggest um, you know improvement you can make in operational efficiencies when you're talking about airport improvement? That's that's a great question. Um, I think it's information at the fingertips. Information with what what the the team at the airport needs and being able to push that to the customers so that they feel comfortable with it. And um, it, it involves all of the systems put together. It's just not one aspect. And so from operational efficiencies, it's being able to, to know where the information is and push it from, from the, the employees of the airport out to the customers. 
Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you for your answer. Um, so let's um, uh, take a look at the next question. Um, the next question is from Seattle Tacoma International Airport by Stephanie, and I, um, I assume that this question is also for Molly. Um, so, um, Molly, can you talk a little bit about, as you know, Park Assist LPR read rates? Uh, it says it's 99%, and how do you deal with vanity plates? How do you deal with different state plates, cars in front uh, with a license plates that are located in front or behind the glass? Can you just talk a little bit more about that? Absolutely. So camera-based parking guidance, specifically Park Assist system, is in a very unique position in that we don't just have one chance to read a license plate, but multiple chances because we're dealing with parked cars. Um, and using our algorithm, we've managed to maintain a, an average license plate recognition rate of around 90%, which is almost unheard of in the industry. Um, and again, it's because we're having the ability to really understand different plates in so many different regions. Um, again, we're installed alone in 26 different countries, so we've been able to verify and test different plates to different operations um, over the last seven years. Um, aside from that, cars with no front license plates, uh, that's pretty, pretty typical. I mean, Fort Lauderdale Airport, uh, which is what, where we're installed, has that same type of issue. Um, and typically, you know, our clients will recommend signage indicating please park nose in. Airports are unique in that most people are trying to get luggage out of the back of their car. So, you know, it's more enticing to park nose in. The camera can only read um, what, what it can see. So if a car is parked in such a way that the plate cannot be read, the plate will not be read. Um, that being said, uh, we've really managed to, to have such a wonderful read rate um, using our unique algorithm for solving the license plate recognition in so many different countries. Okay. Thank you, Molly. Thank you so much again. Um, so I think we can handle just one more last question before it's that time. Um, and um, the last question, Molly, if you want to take this one as well, that would be great. Um, the question is, the software application have analytical abilities? Can you just uh, elaborate a little bit on that? The question is from Dragana um, from GTA. Absolutely. Hi, Dragana. Um, so in terms of the, the information that we're collecting, there's a browser-based portal um, that we call Park Insights that different people at the airport would have different levels of access to. So maybe your operator has one um, level of access. Maybe facilities has a different level of access. Um, and in that, you're getting all sorts of different types of analytics ranging from historical reports around occupancy, dwell time, and turnover, um, and, and that information never goes away. So as long as the system is installed, you'll consistently be getting more information to compare year over year. Um, aside from that, we're offering some predictive analytics. So based on your occupancy on Wednesdays, maybe you want to turn X amount of spaces into premium or frequent parker spaces because they're so often utilized. Um, maybe those are the areas of the garage that need pressure washing or what have you because they're so utilized. Um, so yes, absolutely. The analytics are really what you make of them. It's, it's absolutely customized to your operation. Okay, Molly, thank you so much for answering questions and Paul and Daryl as well. Um, I think we're now reaching um, the end of our event. Um, so again, I would like to thank the speakers and the audience especially who joined us today. Um, I want to just ask you a brief favor, if you don't mind taking a moment to answer a few survey questions. It will just help us to evaluate today's event. Um, there's only four questions, and we really appreciate the feedback. I hope everyone enjoyed today's session. Um, I wish everybody a wonderful day, and we will get to all of the questions that we didn't get to today shortly as well as you'll be sent the webcast recording. Thank you so much.